Hey guys, now we are going to look at electronic communication, otherwise known as email. So let's have a look and see what what is this thing about electronic communication? What can we do? Let's find out. So the first thing is that you need to know that electronic communication or sending emails is sending messages as formatted text containing attachments. That's what makes that's what makes email so special. It's not just sending text because like lots of other applications and devices can do that, but we can also send attachments as well. So from one computer to another, you can send files and documents and all kinds of things, and that all falls under this lovely umbrella called email. So we are going to look at a couple of email clients and interfaces, and we're going to see what makes up email and how do we use it. So here is an example right here. We have Outlook the, the product from Microsoft, and that is a very commonly used email client. Have a look, have a look at the screen, memorize it. Good, next one, Gmail. Very, very popular online web-based mail, free. And yeah, it's great, I use that too. Have a look at that, good. Next, Yahoo Mail. Now, I don't really know who actually still uses Yahoo Mail, but there are still people that use it, that just have it. But it's just to show you something. There was something in all of these. Now, in all of those screens that I just showed you, there were a very familiar features and very similar features that you should have noticed that were consistent across all of those applications. Do you remember what they were? No, you probably don't, but I'm going to help you, okay? So, we have the to field. We have a CC field. You probably saw that in some of them. We have a BCC field. Yeah. Then we have a subject line. And we also have attachments as well. I'm going to go through these and just talk about what these actually are. So the to field, basically, that is the recipient of your message. And we would put the person's email address in that field. Okay. Now, CC. What does CC stand for? Well, CC stands for carbon copy. And that means you can send a copy of your email, okay, the message, to somebody else as well. So you can send the message to person A and also send a copy to person B. It might not be specifically for person B, but you're sending a copy because maybe they need to be copied in on the message. Then we have BCC. Now BCC is blind carbon copy. Now, this is like you want to send a secret copy of your email to somebody else. This is how you do it. So, two, you can send to person A. CC, you can send to person B. BCC, if you send to person C, person A and B won't even know that person C is getting a copy of that email. That's pretty cool. Then, of course, we have the subject line. Well, that's a little bit intuitive, isn't it? What is the message about? What is the email about? That's what we put in the subject line. And then we can add attachments. We can attach files to our email. PDFs, zips, Word documents, Excel documents, JPEGs, images, okay, MP3s, MP4s. So all kinds of things we can attach. The paperclip icon is very well recognized in most email clients, whether they are desktop applications or online applications. And I want you to have a look. With this paperclip icon, we can start attaching things to our message before we send it. So pictures, files or applications, if we need to, music, uh, folders that we've compressed or whatever, notes, text documents, all these things we can attach as an attachment or attachments to an email. However, putting all of these things as an attachment, if we go and start just putting everything into an email as an attachment, it's not going to be very good. And Drake will not be happy. Why? Because maybe all of these attachments are 50 megabytes, and that is way too big. It's too big. It just takes too long. And when you learn later about netiquette, okay, etiquette online, netiquette, you'll learn that actually sending a 50 megabyte email is a big no-no. We just don't do that. Rather, compress your files, zip them up into one file maybe, and Drake's so much happier about that. Okay, because that's only 5 megabytes instead of 50. It means it downloads quicker and saves time.
okay? Much easier to work with. The next thing that you will work with when working with email is a contacts list or an address book. Every email client has got some sort of contacts list or address book. And it's important because this helps us to do certain things like creating contact lists or groups or sending mails to a designated group. So sending a group of, uh, of people an email and instead of typing in their email address, if each person every single time, you have a group and that group contains all those people that you want to send to. Let's take a look at the anatomy of an email address. So we have two K. Kardashian, I did at plastic warehouse. Yes, I did. Dot com. Okay, let's analyze this and see what does this email address tell us? How is it made up? Well, first of all, we have the name, the name of the person or the company or just a, it could be a default name like info or support or communications or something. So we have the person's name. Then we have the email designation, which is the universal at symbol. Then we have the company or the business name, the organization or the domain name as the next part of our email address. That's very important. And the last part is the site type or perhaps the location of this domain. Okay, site types and locations, you'll learn more about that in another lesson. Here are a couple examples for you guys. So we have info at buildersexpress.co.za, president at gov.za. Try that one, I wanna see if that works. Registrations at fits.ac.za. And you'll notice like, okay, let's just, if I back up a little, the gov.za, Okay, government website, political site, or vits.ac.za. AC, academic, because it's a university. Good. Support at wordpress.org. Do you see the .org? So it tells us that that's an organization. That's what the email address or the website is. Wordpress.org. Vits.ac. Gov. .za, the gov is our indicator. Uh, .co, .za, .co normally is like a company or a business. Okay. Right. Here is my email address. Okay. Don't abuse it. Which is made up of the name, which is mh. Then we have the email designation, which is at. So it's mh at the company or organization or the domain. Now, the organization or the company, it's me, Matthew Haynes. And then, of course, the site type or the location. This is a special one. This is a dot .online. It's a new internet domain, which is pretty cool. So send me an email. Say something nice. Now, we're going to look at two kinds of emails. One is ISP-based email, or internet service provider. And the second one is online webmail. Let's have a look at what the difference is between these two. ISP-based email, basically, you get given an address, okay, so like e.presley at mweb. So if your ISP is mweb.co.za, you'll get whatever you put in front of their e.presley or anything at mweb.co.za. But this costs a little bit of this, okay, the money. Normally, you pay for that. Why? Because this is part of your internet connection. You have your computer, you go through your router, and you then connect to MWeb's server, and you can download your email. So you have to have an email client, connects to your server, and then downloads your email. It's how we used to have it all the time. Things have changed a lot, though, and now we can look at online webmail instead. Online webmail, slightly different. Here we have a service provided by Gmail uh, or Google, and Gmail is completely free. So we have funkycat at gmail.com. This is all online. So we have the cloud, and we have all these devices, and all these devices can get their email at any time from anywhere. Do you see? They don't have to be at home connecting to their router, downloading it into their, their email client. They can actually get this anywhere in the world at any time, provided that they're online. And it's completely free. It's so like, where is your mail, okay, if it's not with your ISP? Well, it's there somewhere. This is one of Google's data centers somewhere in the world. That's just one of many. Somewhere on one of those servers is your email waiting to be downloaded. So in a nutshell, email is one of the many ways that we use to communicate and send information and data as well. And it's been around for a long time. 
and I think it's going to be around for many more years to come. So, in a nutshell, everybody, I hope that that has helped to blah, 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 blah.